On the 6th of June, at around 7.45 in the morning, we got a comment from Peter Prayer, who's a known dove on the ECB board, and he's a voting member on the executive board of the Governing Council. So he basically came out and said that the June meeting is a live one. And because he's a very well-known dove, uh, to hear such a hawkish comment from him is obviously going to have a massive impact in the market. So what I've done here is I've split the profile up just to show you how the profile looked going into this trade. So at this time, I think this is the comment will have just come out as this split has happened, basically. Um, but what we're looking at is here, this is the 6th of June here, um, and this is basically just the initial balance. Um, and what we're going to be looking at is a trade just after the initial balance, so just after cash open. And it wasn't necessarily on over a comment specifically, but obviously that comment has a lot of weight to it at the moment, especially with the ECB meeting looming so close by. So what we were looking for is a continuation of the move that we saw over the comment itself. Um, so if I just skip through to the next chart, it will give you a better idea of what actually happened during the day. So what happened first thing in the morning is we had a relatively quiet, um, we had a re relatively quiet open. It opened in line, in value, uh, and then quite unexpectedly we had this big flush up and back down before the comment even happened, which I thought was a little bit peculiar, but it could possibly be a spread play as we still had a lot of spreads sorting out their positions after the Italian crisis. Um, so. The comment comes out here at 7.45 and what happens is the bun comes off about 15 to 20 ticks and as you can see it's the highest volume candle of the day so far. Now the way the structure of the market works normally the highest volume candle is not going to be the low or high of the day so that combined with the previous low that we saw on the other chart I showed you a second ago just gives you an inkling that on top of the news that you're probably going to get a continuation of this move during the day. Um, so as we'll see later on in this trade, you can see the majority of the day was a trend day down in Bund. But what we're looking at specifically is this trade here. This trade here is basically looking at taking out this low that we made on the high volume candle during the initial balance and also taking out the three TPO ledge that we'd seen left two days prior to this um, on the profile that I showed you a second ago. So I'm just going to skip through now to the actual ladder playback. Right, and so here we're looking for a break of this low. I think the TPO ledge was around 69 so it coincides with this poor low that we'd made here earlier in the day. So as you can see here, I'm just going to slow this down for a second. What happened here is the traders put his offer in after he'd seen a few big clips going through. Now what you see here in a second is he notices two big clips going through in a second that takes out 74s and 73s. That gives him his first indication to get something into the market. Now he's not going to be hitting full size into the market or trying to get multiple clips off. He's just going to be trying to get a position that he can work around. So if we just give this a second. You'll see he's very quick to react. So as, as he sees the clip, the blip down, he's going to hit market with five lots. There he goes. Um, and from here, he can now, especially when you're in a trade, you're a lot more inclined to watch the price action closer than you are when you're not in a trade. So now that he's got his core position, he's going to be very closely monitoring the orders going in and out the markets. So as you can see here, five lots for him is not a huge amount of size but it's enough that gives him, if it does suddenly go, he's got something on it. If not, he's got a chance to work around his position and build a core position when the move actually comes to fruition. Um, so I'm going to speed this up again to normal speed, just so this doesn't take two hours to watch. Yeah, so here you can see he's starting to notice clips going through. And so he hits another five into the market. Now he's got pretty much a base scenario, a base position for his trade. So from here, now now's when the 
price action really comes into play. You really need to be looking exactly what's going on through the book to be able to work out whether you need to be staying in this trade or getting out or averaging to get a better position or you know just how you're going to work your position around this market. So as we can see here, there are some big clips going through. But as we saw before, the initial seller came in at 77, 78 slash 77. So he's going to quite safely and quite happily put another offer in at 77 to average out his positions, try and get a better position in the market, um, knowing that if it goes past 78, 79, he's probably going to have to start scaling out because it means the seller that was there initially, he might not be there. He might just be a one and done type of broker, he put one one order through the market and then he's finished. So we'll just look at how he manages this. If I remember rightly, it does flick back a few ticks before coming off. So you'll notice also the way the mouse is hovering over the bid and the offer. At the moment he's not too worried, so he neither expects a massive flush up or an immediate break. But you'll notice when, when it looks like there's going to be a break either way, he'll very quickly be hovering over both hit market order area on both sides, both bid and offers. So we'll just wait a minute and you'll see this. He'll slowly start to build the position up. So as you can see here, at the moment, he's not seeing any big clips go through. All that hit down then was a 1 and then a 12, and you know, and then there's 50 up. So at the moment, there's nothing stand out about the price action that's going to get you into the trade or get you out of it, really. So basically, what he's looking for is to see some sort of indication that the trade is going to come to fruition and that he's going to get some continuation on the move and hopefully a break of both those lows that we talked about earlier. Speed this up to one and a half times. I apologise, the trade does take a little while, as, as you can expect. Not every trade is going to take five, ten minutes. Some take hours, some take minutes. So it's all, all dependent on the situation, really. So as you can see here, there's still not a huge amount of size going through the bid of the offer. You've got a 60 lot down there, then a 70 lot. And the way that the Bund has been trading over the Italian crisis is quite a thin market at the moment. So there's not really a, it doesn't really take a lot to take out a price. You're talking maybe 100 lots will clear a price pretty easily at the moment. Um, so here we see a flick back up, but not on a lot of size. If I'd slowed that down, you'd see it was only really 70 and 80 lots taking out those prices. Because the liquidity you see here, most of the time, it's algos and the orders are not real. Um, so here we go, there you've got 150 down. This is where he starts to realise that price action is picking up and he's ready to act on his trade and manage his position. See at this point, whilst the, whilst the bun's still holding below 77, 78, 79 area, he's not too worried. But as soon as it gets close to this area, he's going to start being ready to massage his position or possibly start scaling out. So as you can see here, it's still holding under the 78, 79's area. Um, so at the moment, he's not too worried. But as it starts to get closer, he will be getting ready to get one or two clips out, depending on how far he wants to run his original position. The important bit of this video to notice is when the flows really start coming through, you need to be 
quick to act and be flexible with your position. So in a minute, when here's when you start seeing big clips go through. So there's only a 40 lot going through, but in a second, if I remember rightly, there's another 90 lot, and then in a second you see 72s getting cleaned out with a 200 and 300 lot. So this is when he sees the price action getting through and he knows the seller's there. So this is when he's very quickly, he doubled his clip, whereas you saw before, he was going up in fives, then tens. As soon as he sees a good indication that the seller's definitely there, he's gonna get more size on. So he's effectively doubled his position and now he's going to be looking at how he can manage that position into the break. So I'm just going to slow this back down to normal speed. Right, so there you saw a 700 on the lot. It wasn't real. It was probably a flipper of some sort. Um, and then a 100 lot takes out the price easily. So this is where the low was. So you're looking for something on the break of this. So as this goes, you see the flush there. That's the poor low going. And very quickly to scale out at 64s, I think it's 67s, I think he scaled out, just to lock in some profits and make sure that nothing is going to, um, if he gets some sort of retracement out of fast speed, he's not going to have issues trying to get out and taking large losses because he's already locked in a large percentage of his profits. So that break was all he was really looking for there. Once he scaled out of his first lot, He's not really expecting the large continuation. The, the way the bun's trading at the moment, it's very difficult for it to do 40, 50 ticks in a straight line in this kind of velocity. So for this trade, he's literally looking for the initial break. And what you saw there, the blip through, that was essentially stops going off and knowing that the poor low is going to go at some point. He's very quick to take his profits on this. So whilst he got all of his size in at a reasonable place he now has to be very quick to scale out because you know you're not looking for more than 10 15 maybe 20 ticks at the very most on these kind of breaks so it's always good on these kind of breaks to have offers placed down uh, to have bids I should say sorry to have bids placed down because very often on these kind of breaks it can flush through and very quickly get bought back up so just to make sure that you're not going to be running your whole position back up, it's always good to have bids placed, this is not the bid he placed there, but have bids scattered around, as you'll see from the other order flow execution videos. Most traders that we work with will always have bids or offers scattered around above and below their trades, just to make sure that the profits get locked in, should there be a blip of some sort. If there isn't, then it's easier to manage your position, but on a lot of these kind of breaks specifically, on poor lows and TPO ledges, it's very often a quick blip and, blip and a flashback. So you want to make sure that you're locking in profits as quickly as possible. You're not looking to run your entire size 40, 50 ticks looking for a home run. So I think the main thing to take out of this trade is just that you need to be flexible in the way that you get in and out of the market. And you need to be very aware of the price action because it's the price action that keeps you in or out of the trade. Um, you don't want to see sort of small clips down. Once you, get to see, once you start seeing you know, two lots, three lots going down, you can see that the price action is starting to get exhausted and that could be a clue to get out. Um, I'm not necessarily this is the, always the case because you know, a lot of the times or some of the time you get these very grindy moves that, which do small size will just keep hitting into bids and offers and they'll just grind down lower and lower and you don't really get the flashbacks but it's not really relevant for this kind of trade this kind of trade you're looking for the initial break and a possible quick flush so yeah basically you want to be flexible with your size but you also need to maximize on your edge and if you can see the price action and what you want to see big clips going through very little bid ups not a lot of orders going through the offers then that's your sign to really maximise your edge and get your size on and really maximise your profits on that trade. Thank you very much.